This week on Fitech Featured Builds, we just received this 1966 21 window VW Microbus. We're bringing it back into the shop to show the installation of a Fitech two barrel EFI system on an air cooled Volkswagen engine. Let's start by removing the engine from the vehicle. This will make it easier to remove the gas tank which sits behind it. Installing a Fitec EFI system into an air-cooled Volkswagen engine is a little bit different than a standard installation. Some of the things that we'll have to tackle is building an intake manifold to fit the 2300 flange of the two-barrel EFI system, installing a coolant temperature sensor into the oil so it'll work as an oil temperature sensor, and install the force fuel mini off to the side of the engine itself. Now that we have the engine removed, we're gonna remove the carburetor and intake manifold so we can place our new intake manifold and throttle body injection system on to see what kind of adapter plate we need to build to make this fuel injection system work on an air-cooled engine. In preparation of designing the adapter plate, we've got to put the intake manifold together on the engine so we can mock up the fitment of the throttle body. We are using a Weber Progressive Style intake manifold as it is very close to a 2300 flange which will make the adapter plate much easier. We are test fitting the throttle body onto the intake manifold to see how high we have to raise the throttle body to fit next to the alternator. Also we have to take into account the air filter snorkel on the top of the throttle body. Once we have a general idea, we also have to make a check on if the throttle linkage will move freely. Now that we have the MP Weber Progressive intake manifold installed on the engine, we're going to build a custom adapter plate to go from the Weber Progressive flange up to a 2300 flange native of the Fitech two barrel EFI system. Now that we have the adapter plate complete, we're going to mount it to the intake manifold so we can scribe the size of the adapter plate to the intake manifold and then port match it. When installing the carburetor studs, be sure to not bottom them out. By doing this, you allow a little bit of movement of the carburetor studs so you can more easily mount the throttle body down to the adapter plate. Here we are test fitting everything, making sure everything lines up. Once everything is secured, mocked up, and we know everything's going to work, we're going to pull the intake manifold off, we're going to port match our area, and then move on to the next step.
now that we have bolted down the throttle body to the intake manifold, we're going to plug off the return port because we're using a force fuel mini which has a regulator built in. In the Phytech EFI kits, a plug is supplied. Remove the return fitting and put in the plug fitting. Now that we have the throttle body installed, we're going to use a throttle cable and build a custom throttle linkage to hook up the throttle cable. Be sure to mount the throttle cable in a location where you can get full wide open throttle on the linkage. When building a throttle cable bracket, be sure to grab off of two locations to prevent the throttle bracket from turning when using the throttle. In our application, we are grabbing off of both carburetor studs on the driver's side of the throttle body. Next step for the Volkswagen engine is to get an oil temperature sensor into the oil pan of the engine. Obviously a Volkswagen engine does not have a coolant temperature sensor revision in it because there's no coolant in the engine, so we're going to use oil temp instead. Now we need to hook up our oil temperature sensor. Now that we got our oil temp in the oil pan of the engine, the length for the connection from the throttle body is greater than what it would be on a V8 type engine. To get this extra distance, we're going to have to extend the leads. Doing so in a proper manner will not void the warranty of the product. Be sure to use proper connections and heat shrink the ends to ensure a clean, tight connection. Now it's time to install the Force Fuel Mini and the all new relay box that comes standard with all new Phytech throttle body EFI systems. This includes the Go Street series, the Go EFI 4 series, and the Power Adder series throttle body fuel injection systems. The new relay box gives a convenient and easy location to access fuel pump relays, main relays, and fuses for the Go EFI systems. With the removable cover, you can get direct access to be able to replace relays and the fuses. So keep it in an accessible location. When finding a location to mount the Force Fuel Mini, it is really important to mount the Force Fuel Mini in a direction where the return line is the highest port on the module. Being that we're mounting this one vertically, it can be mounted and placed directly up and the return is the highest point. Make sure you pick a location that is secure and will not vibrate loose over time. Now it is time to install the easy return bung into the gas tank. The easy return bung comes standard with the Force Fuel Mini. The gas tank has been removed and cleaned out to remove any type of fuel or fumes inside of it.
We're gonna drill a 3 8 hole into the gas tank somewhere high up on the edge of it. And then we're gonna install our easy return bung into the side of the gas tank. Using a little bit of grease on the threads, be sure to fully tighten the bolt while holding the bung onto the gas tank to ensure a proper seal. Once installed, do a pressure check to ensure an airtight seal. Now that we have the engine installed, it's time to put the oxygen sensor on the exhaust manifold. Being that this is a custom application, we're going to have to modify the oxygen sensor bung to fit in the proper location in the exhaust. You want to have it in the collector, and being that this is a short section, we're going to mock it up right on the back, right where the collector meets the exhaust pipe or the muffler. Now that the O2 bung is installed, install the exhaust back onto the engine. Now that we have the force fuel mini installed, it's time to route the fuel lines. We're going to replace the existing fuel line from the gas tank to the mechanical pump just to ensure that we have the best fuel lines as possible. Next we're going to hook up the return line. The return line will go between one of the ports in black on the force fuel mini and the other side to the return bunk on the gas tank. Now we're gonna hook up a fuel line from our mechanical pump up to the force fuel mini to the other available black port. Finally, we're gonna hook up our high pressure line from the red port on the force fuel mini up to the Phytech throttle body EFI system. In this line, we're gonna install a high pressure 10 micron fuel filter. Being that the force fuel mini has a fuel pressure regulator built directly into it, that is why we can get away with hooking a single line up to the throttle body. To wire up the Phytech EFI system, we need to hook up the battery wire, the fuel pump wire, the key wire, and the tack wire. Now that we have our throttle bracket created and we have our throttle cable hooked up, we can hook up the other side of the throttle cable up to the pedal at the front of the vehicle. Thank you to Lucas Oil for supplying the oil for this engine, as well as the detail spray to keep this VW bus looking as clean as ever. Now that the EFI installation is complete, we're gonna move on to the handheld and do our initial setup. To do this, we're gonna go to the initial setup section of the handheld and then go into engine setup. 
In engine setup, we're going to change our cylinders to four cylinders. Cubic inch of the engine, we're going to take down to 97. We're going to go to cam one. We will set the rev limit to 4,500 RPM. and idle speed at 550 RPM. We are gonna be sure to hit send to ECU after every change we make to confirm that's the setting that we would like to select. Once we have all of our parameters saved, we're gonna key off and allow the computer to save all of our information, and then we're ready to start the engine. We're gonna put the bus on the dyno. The dyno in this application is really going to be nothing different than driving the vehicle around on the streets. It just allows us to do it in one location without risking the vehicle on the open road. And that's what it takes to install a Fitec EFI system on a Volkswagen air-cooled four-cylinder engine. I hope you enjoyed the video and please tune in to the next video Fitec Fuel Injection creates.